It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. More recently, a school is underneath hot water for playing a video openly against white people. New Prog School staff's training video depicts white people as mosquitoes. The superintendent of the district said instruction on microaggression and bias is embedded in professional development for staff. The new Prague Area Schools is dedicated to creating a culture where all students have equal and inclusive opportunity to strive academically, socially, and emotionally, said the superintendent. As a school system, we will honor the uniqueness of each individual and embrace diverse backgrounds, values, and viewpoints that will build and empower school and community with acknowledging our differences and strengths. So let's just see how educational this video really is. Mosquito bites and their itch are one of nature's most annoying features. But if you're only bitten every once in a while... No, where are you really from? Uh, Cleveland? Sure, it's annoying, but it's not that big a deal. The problem is that some people get bitten by mosquitoes a lot more than other people. I mean, a lot more. Whether it's on a date. Oh, your English is so good. Excuse me? When I think a person says that a person's English is actually good, I don't think that comment is not meant to come across as very much assaulting. Of course, everybody knows that America is full of people, different backgrounds. We have black people here, of course, white people, Asians, Hispanics, people from all walks of life in this country. And so sometimes they might be a foreigner that come directly outside the country and they might have a high level of English that they speak and so sometimes people will notice the high level of English that a person takes the time and the effort to do that and basically try to compliment them to say look you're actually doing a great job what you're doing so far and it's the same thing that happens to me when I go up to my Hispanic neighborhoods and go to like you know talk Spanish to them they say the exact same thing towards me they say what good Spanish you have, Tyler. And so basically, what I'm trying to say is that particular comment is not meant to be insulting in the slightest. Going grocery shopping. You know, everything happens for a reason. I'm just buying apples. Commuting to work. So when are you going to have a baby? Watching TV. We have to keep the Redskins name. It's part of our culture and history. When it comes down to the names of the Redskins, let's just see what exactly the Native Americans to say about this particular issue. From the Washington Post, New poll finds that 9 in 10 Native Americans aren't offended by the Redskins name. The survey of 504 people across every state and district reveals that the minds of Native Americans have retained unchanged since the 2004 poll by the Annenberg Public Policy Center found the same results. Responses to the poll's question about the issue were broadly consented regardless of age, income, education, political party, or proximity to reservations. Among the Native Americans reached over five months period, ending in April, more than seven in ten say that they did not feel that the word redskin was disrespectful to Indians. Even higher number, eight in ten said they would not be offended if a non-native called them that name. Across every demographic group, the vast majority of Native Americans say that the team's name does not offend them, including 80% who identify as politically liberal, 85% of college graduates, 90% of those enrolled in a tribe, 90% of non-football fans, and 90% of those between the ages of 18 and 39. Even 9 in 10 of those who have heard a great deal about the controversy say that they're not bothered by the name. Additionally, it says right here that a Native American group has sued the NFL Washington Commanders for defamation claiming that the historical organization had delegitimized the group and its effort to restore the team's name back to Redskins, but one expert told Newsweek why it may not happen. The lawsuit was filed in North Dakota Federal Court on behalf of Native American Guardians Association against the commanders and key leadership, claiming a collaboration and willful effort by the franchise to frame the NAGA both verbally and in writing by referring to the nonprofit organization as fake. Last month, the NAGA issued a demand letter to the commanders in conjunction with change.org petition that called for a name change back to its roots, 
exciting history and legacy and how most Native Americans do not fail worse against the derogatory or offensive. You guys heard directly from the horse's mouth. Basically, Native Americans don't find the word offensive. As a matter of fact, they're suing the commanders to return the name back to Redskins. Or just walking down the street with your partner. <gasps> I couldn't even tell you were gay. Honestly, you cannot necessarily know anybody just by simply looking at them. So if someone's on the street, I will not know for a single second that they're basically gay, largely because most of the population is actually straight. And so unless a person directly tells me that they're actually are gay, how would you actually know that they're actually gay? How is it actually some sort of transgression against somebody to know their own personal sexuality? <sighs> Mosquitoes seem to pop up everywhere. Do you know John? Give me shopping so advice. Oh, I love Cher too. And getting bit by mosquitoes every day. Can I touch your hair? Multiple times a day. So pretty. Can, can I, I touch, touch your it? Hair? Please. Oh, 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 please. Oh, oh, can I please? It's oh, annoying. Oh, that makes you want to go ballistic on those mosquitoes, <laughs> which seems like a huge overreaction to people who only get bit every once in a while. <sighs> a mosquito bite who cares just another angry black one of course beyond just being annoying some mosquitoes carry truly threatening diseases that can mess up your life for years astrophysics hmm maybe you should try this challenging major ow my dreams it is so interesting and fascinating that this part talks about how dreams are basically fade away largely because there's actually a new study that came out more recently in regards to racial tensions and how basically people are considering race for job positions in comparison to meritocracy. It says right here that corporate America promised to hire like a lot more people of color it actually did. The year after Black Lives Matter protests, the S&P 100 added more than 300 jobs, 94 went to people of color. For a brief moment in 2020, most of corporate America united around a common goal to address the spark racial imbalances in the workplace. Mass protests sparked by the murder of George Floyd led to a fury of company promises, both specific and vague, to hire and promote more black people and others from underrepresented groups. In total, they increased their U.S. workforce by 3,200 and 94 people in 2021, the first year after the Black Lives Matter protests and the most recent year for which this data exists. The overall job growth included 20,524 white workers, the others 302,570 jobs or 94 of the head count increase went to people of color. So yes, people are in fact losing their dreams, but not necessarily because they're not the most qualified, but you see, because they're a certain race, and it's actually A-OK -okay to discriminate somebody based upon their race. And other mosquitoes carry strains that can even kill you. You looked like you was up to trouble, okay? I felt threatened. The thing about institutionalized racism with police officer is that it's not necessarily based upon reliable data. Professor Fire for faking data to prove lynching makes white people want longer sentences for black, six studies retracted. The academic was fired after almost 20 years of his data, including figures using an explosive study, which claimed the legacy of lynchings made white perceived blacks as criminals, and that the problem was worse among conservatives were found to be in questions. College authorities said that he was bringing fire for incompetence and false results. Amongst the studies he had to restrict were claims that whites wanted longer sentences for blacks and Latinos. Today, six of Stewart's articles published in a major academic journals like Criminology and Law and Society Review between 2003 and 2019 have been fully retracted after allegations the professor's data was fake or badly flawed, it should not have been published. Now here's the kicker. A new study says that white police officers are not more likely to shoot minority suspects. So based upon what I just said right now, see must know that the narrative that the police officers have institutionalized racism is not necessarily, I see, supported by the data. So next time you think someone's overreacting, just remember, some people experience mosquito bites all the time. You're all so exotic, wow. And by mosquito bites, we mean microaggressions. 
You know, one of the things that Hitler did once when he was alive was that he compared Jews to basically rats. And basically this video is no different than something out of Mein Kampf. Really, I am just so disgusted that a school will allow such a video to play in their faculties. And I think that as time goes on, more and more racial tension is going to increase because of this kind of message. Because it seems as though that nowadays it's actually totally acceptable to hate a white person just because they're white. Like imagine a whole entire train section based upon hating somebody like me because I'm black or any other race largely because of their skin color. I don't think anybody would actually accept it. As a matter of fact, I will argue that they probably will raise hell directly because of that whole entire case if somebody were talked bad about a minority. But because somebody is actually white, that's gives some justification to hate somebody just because they're white. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.